What is up guys, welcome to today's One Minute Clinic. And before we get started guys, remember if you want your question answered and turn into a One Minute Clinic video like today, comment your questions down below. I get to every single one. And today's question comes from Seb Tennis. Can you make a video on how to hit low backhand approach shots, specifically one-handed backhands? The only thing missing from my game. Keep up the great videos. Thank you. I will attempt to keep up the great videos by helping you. Oh, by the way, t message to everybody. We officially, at the time of shooting this video, crossed 10,000 subscribers. So thank you to everybody who joined the team. But let's get into today's One Minute Clinic. So when we're talking about the backhand approach shot, specifically the low ones, it actually doesn't matter if it's a one-handed backhand or two-handed backhands. There are only subtle difference in the way you're going to set up your feet and release. But for the most part, these are going to be identical as you're moving forward. The first thing you're going to want to do is obviously assess the flight of the ball so that you can place yourself at the best position. Low approach shots are definitely the ones you want to avoid the most because you end up with the net blocking your path and then you have to pick it up. But if you find yourself in those scenarios, you do the best you can. First thing you're gonna to have to do is decide, are you going to take a slice approach shot or are you gonna actually take a swing, be it two-hander or topspin one-hander? If you're going to go for the slice, your goal needs to be to keep the ball low and through the court. So if a ball comes to me and I'm setting myself in this position, I need to not have that ball leaving off of my strings at a higher point. I need to have that ball knifing through the court and staying low like so. When you're hitting that, at the best part about it is, most people are going to want to take their legs through and cross their legs, which allows them to keep that momentum going. And a slice approach shot is also gonna be slower, which allows you to get yourself closer to the net. When you switch to the one-handed topspin shot or the two-handed topspin shot, it's gonna be a little bit different of a tactic. Your goal is gonna to be to get the ball to go up and down quickly. I'm gonna shift the angle so you guys can see the difference in the two. So I have my hitting partner, Joel, here to help me demonstrate this shot. I'm going to be showing you guys just the action on the slice. When you go for the slice, as I said before, you want that ball to come in at a lower angle, clearing the net there. But then, obviously, you don't want to hit it short. So you want to give it a lot of action through the court. And as you see, it floats through. So if I hit that shot again, by the time the ball gets to the net, or the ball gets over there, I'm able to get into this position right here, which makes passing me a lot more difficult. And your opponent would have to lift the ball up. And because they're lifting it up, that makes passing me even more difficult because the net's in the way. Now switching it to the topspin shot, the action we're gonna want is not to have the ball sitting up for our opponent to attack like so. We're gonna try and hit it lower, but we're also trying to get it up and down quickly. One more time down, up, and then down. Most people make the mistake of when they go for the rolls, getting the ball too high. And again, you get time with that, but your opponent has a ball that sits in this position here, and then they're able to attack. And usually you end up with these balls that go cross court a little too sharp. So now let's jump into the technical part of it, just so that we can polish up a couple things to make it better. Everything I say on the one-hander, aside from how you release your body is gonna be identical to the two-hander. So before I get there, when you release your body on the one-hander, you're gonna try and stay sideways until the ball's gone, then open up. When you release on the two-hander, you're gonna bring your body around with the shot. Those are the only differences. So let's get into the actual approach shot. So bringing it to this angle here, the two things you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you do is assess how far forward you need to be, because that's gonna tell you how much time you have to complete your whole swing. For example, if you're going quick, you're only gonna have a shorter swing drop the racket, and then just pick it up. If you're having enough time to really set up, then you're gonna move with the racket further back. Combine that with this little footwork pattern for your backhand, if you're right-handed, you're gonna be sideways and you're gonna jump from your right foot to your right foot if you're hitting the top spin shot, and you're gonna cross your legs behind you if you're hitting the slice. Let me get that ball, please, sir. So in sideways, going right foot to right foot and then moving forward. If I'm hitting top spin, if I'm hitting a slice, I'm gonna take my leg behind me and then do that movement there. What that does is allow me to continue my momentum forward. The big thing that people tend to do when they hit these approach shots is they stop, hit, and then they try to go into the court again. 
you end up killing a lot of time that you need to close off those angles. So whichever one you try to do, make sure that you continue your momentum and get into the court. Last thing you wanna do, again, talking about the low ones, is since the net is an obstacle, if you're hitting the top spin shot, do not close your strings. A lot of people make this mistake. Don't close your strings, square up your strings so they are sitting parallel to that net and then bring your racket up really sharp while letting your body momentum go forward. Don't drag your arm out into the court because you're gonna end up flattening it out and hitting the net before you get a chance to pick the ball up. So same thing, getting down, up, and then moving forward. Keep that racket here, pull the arm straight up, don't extend out. One more time, a little lower, down low, up, and then through. Now for our last part, I've covered this on other videos, but I'm gonna add it in here since it is all part of the same thing. Tactically speaking, you want to take those approach shots down the line most of the time. You can go cross court to keep the person honest, but 90 to 95% of the time, you're going to take that shot down the line and close off the angles. Whether you're hitting top spin or a slice, doesn't matter. The best time to go for the cross court shot on the top spin is going to be when the ball sits high and you can actually hit it off the court and it's more of a winner attempt than an approach shot. But if that ball is just coming in here, you're just going to get low, go up, and then come in, close off that angle, finish off with the volley. So one last demonstration before we close this video, getting down low, up, volley, finish off and be done. Doesn't matter whether they try and pass you cross quarter down the line, taking off those angles and getting close enough, you should have no problem handling the shot. But that's gonna wrap up today's video, guys. As always, if you know anybody who would benefit from this, send it off to them. Again, thank you guys for helping us reach 10K. And if you want your question answered, comment your questions down below. I will add it to the list. But until then, I'll see you guys in our next one minute clip.